All right, here's our video on moles and types of chemical reactions. And we'll talk about moles first. And we're not talking about skin growths, things that are on your face or wherever they may be. Or we're not talking about those little animals, right? We're talking about a unit of measurement. And when we use it, let's get let's use blue. We'll write it as M-O-L, which means mole. And we use it in chemistry, and I'll explain that. So let's talk about that first. So let's say, and yeah, we'll keep blue. Let's say we had this. We had H2. So we know that this is two hydrogen atoms. It's two hydrogen atoms. But it's one hydrogen molecule. That's important to know. And when we're writing moles, we're going to say one mole, M-O-L, that's mole, hydrogen molecule. That's what they're normally talking about, the molecules. But you can also say two mole hydrogen atoms, if you're specific. But for the most part, we use, deal with the molecule, so you don't really have to put the molecule in. For example, if I did this, 2H2, so now we know we have two molecules of, of hydrogen. Remember, that's a, two of them together, and this is oversimplified. So these are, right, we have four hydrogen atoms, but two hydrogen molecules. So we'll say two mole hydrogen, meaning two hydrogen molecules. I fix that mole. Looks like an MD. There we go. Now, or we can say four mole hydrogen atoms. So again, mole is just a unit of measurement that we use in chemistry. Now, let's talk about the type of reactions. And again, these are the four main types. There are others we'll talk about in other videos. We'll just talk about these four now. And we'll start, obviously, with the top one, synthesis, right there. And synthesis is also called combination. It's also called combination. So you might hear them called combination of synthesis. Now, here you can see it. It has two reactants, two separate reactants, right? Here's one, here's two. You can see it, right? And these two reactants will make one product. One product. I'll write it here. One product. All right, just got the T in there. So again, two reactants, two or more reactants are going to make one product product. Let me give you an example of that. Let's use that color. And we'll come over here. So if I took uh, two reactants, let's say we took sodium plus chlorine, sodium chloride, the reactant, you yield one product, which is table salt. So sodium plus chlorine, chlorine will, will give us sodium chloride table salt. One product. Pretty simple, right? Now let's talk about decomposition. If you look at it, it's the complete reverse. You have a compound here. This is one compound, and it's going to yield, it's going to make two products, the complete reverse. So let's get a clear page. I'll give you an example of that. All right, let's use, you know, use black. Why not? So let's say we had this. We had Hg, which is mercury. You know, a mercury is a liquid. And by the way, it's the only metal that is liquid at room temperature. But when you, here we have now a compound, right? And it's, and we're going to, and this compound is going to be solid. So even though mercury is liquid and oxygen is a gas, when you put those two together, it'll create a mercury oxide, right? And that is a solid. It, the, the product will be mercury oxide. And so it'll yield, it'll yield, and by the way, it needs this delta sign because heat has to be added. Remember, that's the Greek letter delta, remember delta airlines, and it means heat is added in chemistry. Heat is added. Now in math, it means the change of, remember the, if you remember the change of y over the change of x to find slope? So this will give us, so this, these are the reactants. And, there, and there's one compound. This is one compound. So it's A and B, one compound, giving us A plus B, giving us our mercury plus our oxygen. 
And of course the mercury now, this will be liquid and that's gas. So you'll see S and L and G. You also see this. We're going to talk about this one in the next one. And I've, it's, you know, you can hear it as aqueous. Most people say aqueous, but you'll hear in other countries sometimes aqueous. So whatever one you want to say, but it's, we'll say aqueous here. All right. So the third one, and we'll use white. And we'll circle that over here. Here's the third one, single replacement reaction. And it's almost like the associative property. You see, we have A, B plus C, and then now where A was once together, it's now with another one. It's joined something else, and the B was together. Now it's alone. You can see. Just look at that. Well, here we're saying we have a compound, right? We have a compound over here. We'll write it over here. We have a compound plus a pure element. A compound plus a pure element is going to give us a new compound a new compound and a new a new pure element and we lost that e in the white and the t but you know what i mean so let's give an example of that so let's write it out right so you have a compound right let's say just a b it's a compound plus a pure element c and it's going to yield now a new compound and a new pure element. Now, it's very important to know in single displacement that metal, metal must, must replace metal. Metal must replace metal. And what do you think? Non-metal must replace non-metal. Let's all write that. If you want to write that down, if you want to pause the tape. So let's give an example. I'll show you. Let's say we eh, we took sodium and chlorine. All right, that's our A and B. And then we added uh, potassium. So Na and Cl, sodium chloride, you're going to put an AQ, aqueous. In other words, it's dissolved in water. And you know salt is dissolved in water. That's why they put the aqueous there. And potassium is an alkaline, so we will put it's a solid. So we have potassium. And it will yield. What do you think it will yield? Remember, we have it up here. We have A. And by the way, sodium is a metal. So a metal must replace a metal. So you can't have the metals together. You can't have Na and K together in this single displacement reaction. So what you should see now is the potassium replacing the sodium with cl and now the sodium by itself because right here like i said metal must replace metal we just cut through the metal there now let me give you one if non-metal replaces non-metal so let's say we had and why don't we use let's use purple what if we had sodium and bromine, sodium bromine, which is a salt, by the way, that's a salt too. So this is the AB compound, single compound, plus here's our C, and we had chlorine. It'll yield, so now the sodium or the brom bromine has to be replaced. What has to be replaced? Remember, metal replaces metal, but non-metal replaces non-metal. So now, the sodium is going to stay. The chlorine's replacing the bromine. Right? So that's now AC, ACDC, right? And we have B, which is the bromine. BR. So that's non-metal replacing non-metal. So remember in single displacement reaction, metal replaces metal, and non-metal replaces non-metal. Okay, let's do our last one. And by the way, uh, NABR, sodium bromine, is used as uh, like a hypnotic, not to hip hypnotize you, but like uh, eating, sleeping, or like sedatives. All right. And now we have our double displacement. So we have two compounds, two compounds, and they're going to create two new compounds. So right here, just study it right here. 
make sure we have our pen ready get that white going all right and so i'll do a circle here so you see that a was with b but now a is with c and c was with d but now c is with a and d is with b you know just so again two compounds creating two new compounds let's look at an example of that so again just remember that a metal replaces a metal and a non-metal replaces a non-metal so we'll use blue why not so again we have right over here we have a compound plus another compound it's double right it's going to yield a different compound let's look at it right so let's say what if we had so k potassium and bromine br and this would be potassium bromide and by the way bromine bromine is a non-metal but it's liquid at room temperature it's the only non-metal liquid at room temperature remember we talked about mercury it was the only metal liquid at room temperature but uh, bromine is the only non-metal that's liquid at room temperature but it's still a non-metal so we have we have here we have a metal we'll just say m and non-metal and then we'll add it let's say we will use silver ag and we'll use that nitrogen and oxygen so this will be silver nitrate and this will yield so now we have a metal and a non-metal so how do you think this should work out right so if we take the potassium now we'll replace the silver with the potassium right so we'll have potassium with this with the nitrogen and oxygen and we'll get potassium nitrate so let's write that there potassium nitrate You see how the metal replaces the metal, the non-metal replaces the non-metal. And then over here we have silver, you know, it's replacing the potassium and we get silver bromide. Silver bromide. All right, so those are the four types of chemical reactions. There are other types we'll talk about in other videos.